Being a rapper is dangerous. It's like every other day, another artist either gets killed over old beef or just plain jealousy. Let's look at some of the men who kill famous rappers. FBG Duck. FBG Duck was one of the hottest Chicago rappers before he got killed in August 2020. Duck was a GD and grew up around 63rd and St. Lawrence in the South Side, which ain't too far from Parkway Gardens, aka O Block. Duck was from the STL EBT set of the Gangsta Disciples, who beef with Black Disciples, including 600 and O Block. These gangs always beef with each other, but a few big murders turned it into an all out war. So that, combined with the rise of drill music and all the dissing that came with it, made the war between these gangs one of the deadliest ever in hip hop. In January 2011, a GD from STL EBT named Shondell Gregory, aka Tuka, was killed while waiting for a bus. They say he got chipped in retaliation for a BD named Edric Walker, aka Ty, who was allegedly killed by the GDs. STL EBT got revenge a few months later when KI, a teenage girl who became one of Chicago's most feared shooters, killed OD Perry. OD was a top BD member from a set called Wick City. After he died, Wick City changed their name to O Block and swore to get revenge on STL EBT, who also changed their name to Tukaville. So these two murders were set off the war in Chicago that's now lasted over 10 years. O Block had the most famous rappers like Chief Keef, Lil Durk, and King Von. But STL EBT had their own clique of rappers called the Flyboy Gang, aka FBG. FBG's most popular rapper was Duck, but there was also his brother Brick, his homie Wooski, and other GD rappers like Lil J and Billionaire Black. O Block and FBG would send shots at each other in their music, and that just caused more violence in the actual streets. Both sides have lost a lot of members in this beef, but the most shocking was probably when FBG Duck got murdered last August while out shopping in Chicago's Gold Coast neighborhood. A few weeks before, Duck dropped a diss track called Dead where he took shots at several dead members of O Block, including O.D. Perry. Then, on August 4th, 2020, Duck was killed broad day in one of the richest areas in Chicago. Witnesses say two cars pulled up and four dudes hopped out as Duck was walking out of the Dolce & Gabbana store. Duck's death ain't just shocked drill fans, it shocked the entire city of Chicago, mainly because there was gang violence in a wealthy area. Just recently, Chicago police arrested five members of O Block for the murder of FBG Duck in a major RICO indictment. They arrested C Murder, Kenny Mack, Los, C Thang, and Muwap. They also implicated a sixth member of O Block named Zell Money who took his own life earlier this year. Police say social media and music videos played a big role in helping him solve the case. Many O Block members bragged about the hit on social media and take credit for the murder. There's even a video of Boss Top, an O Block member who damn near admitted to the murder in an interview. When asked about Duck, he pretty much said it was retaliation for dissing their dead homie. The arrest just happened and nobody's been found guilty of the murder. But many say this may be the end of O Block. Because it's a RICO indictment, the police might try to bring in other cases to take down the whole organization. But right now, they focus on just this murder. The case is still active, so stay posted for updates. But FBG Duck ain't the only rapper to get gunned down in his own city. This next artist was hunted down while driving on the highway and got killed while trying to escape the shooter on foot. Mo3 Mo3 was one of the biggest rappers coming out of Dallas, Texas before he was killed last year. He racked up millions of streams on tracks like Outside, Better Days, and Mop With It. But he also beefed with a lot of other dudes in the city, which eventually led to his downfall. In November 2020, Mo3 was driving down I-35 in Dallas but slowed down because of the traffic. While he was stopped, a masked man in the car that was following him got out and approached his car. Mo3 must have seen him coming because he got out of his own car and tried to run away. The killer started chasing him and shot the rapper and also an innocent person. That person survived, but Mo3 died. A few months later, police arrested two men for his murder. 22-year-old Kiwan Dontrell White and 28-year-old Devin Maurice Brown. They think that White was a shooter and that he was hired by Brown for the hit. White was known in Dallas for being a shooter. He also rapped under the name Banzo Banks and had ties to other rappers in the city like Go Yeo, Yo, Yella Beezy, and Trap Boy Freddy. These rappers also had beef with Mo3 after they got into a fight at a show a few years before. This led to Go Yeo Yo banning Mo3 from Fort Worth, which he ignored. When he went to go perform at a club in Fort Worth, he was pressed by Yayo and his goons, which led to a shootout, leaving an innocent person dead. Since then, all the other Dallas rappers had to pick sides, and most of them chose Go Yayo. So Mo3 would have problems with both Trap Boy Freddy and Yella Beezy, and a lot of murders and shootouts would come as a result. So, when Kiwan White was arrested for the hit, many thought it had something to do with this beef. But the police think there was a different motive behind the shooting. Police arrested White after a photo of the killer was released to the public and a witness identified him as a shooter. 
When the cops tried to question him, he took off on a dirt bike and then on foot. They eventually caught up to him and found a 9mm in his pocket. His cell phone record showed he was in the area where Mo3 was killed on the day of the shooting and also made several calls to Devin Brown right before the murder. A female witness told police that Brown was mad at Mo3 because they were in a relationship. Another witness said that Brown hit her up multiple times asking for Mo3's location. When questioned by police, Brown admitted he knew Mo3 and had been upset over a Facebook video that he seen with the rapper and one of the witnesses, but he denied any involvement in the murder. When they searched his crib, Police found a stolen AK-47, synthetic cannabinoids, also called K2, methamphetamine pills, scales, baggies, and some cash. So aside from the murder charge, Brown is facing up to 20 years just for the drugs and guns. White denied knowing Brown, even though cell phone records show they called each other multiple times. Police think that Brown was angry with Mo3 over his relationship with a female and paid White to kill him. The case ain't gone to court yet, so more details may come as the trial progresses. If you thought that was wild, this next artist dissed one of the biggest rappers in the world, then ended up dead a few weeks later. G Money G Money is a Baton Rouge rapper best known for his beef with NBA Youngboy. G was part of a crew called TBG, a well-known gang and rap crew from Baton Rouge. G Money and Youngboy grew up together, and at one point, it was like G was his mentor. Youngboy was friends with his younger brother Lil Herc. G Money was a few years older and decided to take him under his wing and teach him how to rap. Early on, Youngboy was signed to TBG and dropped his first mixtape, Life Before Fame, with the label. But at that time, the project didn't really do too much. Meanwhile, G Money was one of the hottest rappers in the city thanks to the track iPhone 6. So, Youngboy felt like TBG ain't believing his talent and he left the label to create his own wave. This is where NBA first began. When he left TBG, they was on good terms. But over time, the relationship got worse and worse. Not long after leaving TBG, Youngboy's career was heating up and he would send disses at G Money and the rest of TBG. G Money would respond, and this is how it slowly turned into some real beef. Youngboy also said in the song that G Money had slept with his sister, which G confirmed in an interview with Say Cheese TV. They would send shots back and forth at each other over the next few years. In August 2017, G Money dropped the track Industry, NBA Youngboy response, where he went in on Youngboy, questioning his street cred and saying he would kill him if it wasn't for the relationship he had with Youngboy's mom, Sharonda. Less than two weeks later, G Money was murdered after leaving a recording studio in Baton Rouge. Because of his public beef with Youngboy, the NBA camp was immediately under investigation, but it took police a few years to make an official arrest. In January 2021, police arrested DeAndre Fields, aka NBA Pap, for the murder of G Money. Police questioned Pap three days after the murder, but he told the cops he was out of town at the time G Money was killed. Cell phone records later confirmed this wasn't true and he was actually in Baton Rouge at the time of the murder. When they asked Pap about who was the main shooter in the NBA crew, he allegedly responded, to be honest, me. NBA Pap was also a victim in a shooting in April 2020 that was captured on surveillance footage. Police identified Mayoshi Edwards as the shooter, aka Lit Yoshi. Lit Yoshi is another popular rapper from TBG who was close to G Money. Police think this shooting was revenge for the rapper's death. Both sides of this war are now feeling the pressure from police. Not only is NBA Pap looking at a murder charge, Youngboy is also facing decades in prison for a federal firearm charge and it seems like a RICO case is coming any day. Lit Yoshi is also facing more than seven attempted murder charges while his boy Fredo Bang is locked up beside him. So both gangs are facing some real legal issues that might take them off the streets for good. But American rappers ain't the only ones who gotta be careful in their own city. This next rapper was killed in his hometown of Toronto, then got his memorial service shot up by ops just days later. Houdini Houdini was one of Toronto's most popular rappers before he was killed last year in May. He racked up millions of plays on tracks like Backseat and Mansion and got co-signs from major artists in the industry like Meek Mill and Tory Lanez. But Houdini was also from the Jane Driftwood neighborhood, one of the most dangerous hoods in the city. He was from a large crib set and they beat for another hood called Regent Park. On May 26, 2020, Houdini was murdered down while out shopping in downtown Toronto. Just like FBG Duck, his killers waited until he had his guard down and caught him lacking in a rich area far away from the hood. The killers parked on the street for like 40 minutes just waiting for the rapper to walk by. When he finally did, the car moved from where it was parked and the shooter started firing at Houdini and his crew. Two of his boys started shooting back and the 15 year old boy they was with ducked for cover. The 15 year old ended up getting hit along with Houdini and an innocent woman who was standing in the doorway of her condo, but Houdini would be the only one who died. The rapper's death was a major blow to Toronto as Houdini was one of his most promising young stars. His funeral was held on June 8th in Mississauga, Ontario, 
The next day, his friends and family had a vigil in Toronto. Around 11.20 p.m. that night, a car drove up along the curb right across from the parking lot where the vigil was being held and started letting off shots. Two rappers that were there, GD and Burna Bands, fired back in retaliation and ended up facing gun charges. At least nine people were in attendance and two victims suffered gunshot wounds but later recovered. Police announced that six people were identified as being involved in the shooting and three were arrested. They arrested a 21-year-old from Brampton, a 25-year-old from Newmarket, and a 37-year-old from Toronto but kept their identities confidential. They also identified 30-year-old Glenn Danchi, 19-year-old Javante Johnson, and 25-year-old Terrell Whitaker as suspects in the shooting and asked the public for help finding them. Police would also identify a 17-year-old named Elijah Robinson as a primary suspect in Houdini's murder. He's currently wanted on multiple firearms charges, including discharge with intent to wound. He's still on the run and is said to be armed and dangerous. Police had to get special permission to give his identity to the public because technically, he's still a minor. Unfortunately, the rap game has lost a lot of talent over the years to pointless beefs and petty jealousy. RIP to all the rappers mentioned. At least their legacy will live on through their music.